fast exchange of information and ideas. The best part? It's on demand at your own time and simply on all the time. It may be a wild west out there, but also a place where you can strike gold. For instance, we found Yeber, a website that rewards you for being a critic. Yeber comes from the word jabber and is a platform for people to share their experiences about almost anything under the sun. It's a complete site. Uh, people who write reviews on it don't have to go to multiple sites to post their comments. They can do it all in one site. So that's one of the, of the advantages. It's convenience for the, the, the users. Another advantage that we have seen is that uh, Yerba serves as a means for people to find new things. A third benefit we see in Yerba is that uh, it has helped many uh, Yerbas to make their blogs public, make it known. And it's all about how well read your review is. The more people click on your review, the higher your blog traffic would be, and that means more money. Already, members of Yeber, or Yebers as they are called, earn Yeber dollars when they write reviews. Earn a minimum of 700 Yeber dollars and you can cash out. An average review earns you about 30 Yeber dollars, so all you have to do is write 25 reviews and you'll earn at least 30 US dollars. In fact, it's not so difficult to accumulate Yeber dollars. Uh, 700 seems like quite a lot, but if you think about it, it's just about 25 reviews complete with pictures, maybe. Right, so we have members who are able to hit 700 Yeba dollars within a week of signing up. The beauty of Yeber is that it's user-generated and user-driven. The community is moderated through user comments and ratings on reviews. A new media example of new money, Yeber, has already given out more than 100,000 Yeber dollars so far, which is almost 5,000 US dollars in real life. No surprise then that one of the top Yebers is already cashed out about 300 US dollars. Yeber, they are not very strict. They do expect us to write readable reviews. However, they are not very strict when it comes to um, slang and English terms and all that. So it makes it easier for us to write. I mean, you don't have to be you don't have to be like a linguist or you don't have to be like really really good at English to be able to write a review. And moreover, if you have to send in reviews to magazines, they might not accept. Right now, there are about 5,000 Yebers on the site. Join the club and sign up as a member. Registration is free. You can review any business in categories ranging from the arts and entertainment to pets. So go ahead and break in the dough. Coming up, we'll show you who is making big money with new media. But before all that money spinning, let's have a look at what's making news in the world of IT on That's IT's News Bites. From this to this, how has it taken the world by storm? Well, in 1998, Research in Motion released the early pager predecessors of today's BlackBerry. Next came the Curve, the Bull, the Pearl, and the Pearl Flip the one and only BlackBerry smartphone with flip form factor. In 10 years, the BlackBerry device, nicknamed Crackberry for its addictive nature, has garnered 21 million users, or addicts, worldwide. Make that 20 million and one, because I'm taking all of them home with me tonight. Okay, maybe just one. If time is money, you don't want to waste either of them and getting lost is an incredible waste of time and money. So phone makers are releasing a slew of location-based centric mobile phones. One is the HTC Touch Cruise, a touchscreen phone with Windows Mobile 6.1 and TouchFlow 3D interface. The Touch Cruise comes with a software called HTC Footprints, which allows you to add audio clips, notes, and GPS tags to a photo. Even Garmin and Asus are jumping on the bandwagon. The Nuvi phone has Garmin's satellite navigation capabilities in a smartphone. There are two models, the M20 and the G60. Just a familiar tip, don't leave home without them. And speaking of tips, Google has launched a new application to help you save money. It's called the Tip Jar. Anyone can contribute money-saving tips over a wider range of categories 
like shopping, health, technology, and kids and family. Users can vote on tips that they like most, and the most popular tips will appear right on the top. Open source software seems to feature a lot here. We will have more on that a little bit later on here on That's IT, so don't go away. This week on Business Class, we journey to an up-and-coming business destination better known for its golden brew, Qingdao. Find out more about doing business in this scenic port city, as well as what it means to work and play here. Business Class, Wednesday at 7.30pm, exclusively on Channel News Asia. Countdown has begun for the grand finale of Ya on the Start. Get ready to crown the youth idol of Asantham. For more than 100 hopeful participants, it is down to the final six. Who will emerge as the shining star? Live from the MediaCorp TV Theatre, Saturday, 7 p.m. Only on Vasantham. In a world obsessed with record-breaking prices, he chose to give away his own priceless art. His every brushstroke dedicated to defying labels. No East versus West, no Old versus New, no Us versus Them. What legacy is 90-year-old Wu Guanzhong leaving for the art world and for humanity? Painting a Titan, Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Talk to me. Welcome back. You're watching That's IT. Now, we all know that new media can help businesses and individuals find new ways of generating new income. But did you know that new media can also help you save money? Here's how. One way is through open source software, which has no purchasing or licensing costs. And when even the British government is adopting open source, you gotta admit, it is catching on. According to the BBC, this could mean cost savings of almost 1 billion US dollars a year. One type of software that is likely to be deployed is the Open Office, which is very much similar to the Microsoft Office. Other open source platforms are databases like MySQL and operating systems like Linux. In China, there's huge uptake of open source. Um, uh, country by country, it tends to vary, but it's very large here, as opposed to other parts of the world. Open source software doesn't just mean free, it also means that you are free to tinker around with its source code to come up with improvements or modifications. And after you've modified it, it is up to you to decide what to do with it. You can sell it for money or give it back to the community you took it from. If you choose to buy services, a lot of companies base services on open source. So you use open office, you might want to pay for some changes to it. So there's a whole uh, sort of ecology or ecosystem built around it in terms of consultants, right, or contract engineers who will modify it for you that you can hire to do that for you. So for small businesses and enterprises, it's a, a very good ecology. So the savings can go from 10 to, you know, 90% in some cases. It is said that money earns money. So with all that money you've saved, spend it to earn more. Traditional advertisers are starting to recognize that spending money on new media makes sense in more ways than one. eMarketer says that online ad spending in the U.S. is projected to reach 42 billion U.S. dollars in 2013, almost twice what was spent last year. There are two ways that they, the new media is attracting um, traditional advertisers. One is because consumer behavior is changing. So for instance, in the United States, about 24% of people's time is spent with digital media. So a marketer has to sort of recognize that if 24% of its time, of its audience, is going to digital media, if you do not actually allocate money to digital media, you are losing you know, competitive positioning. So that's one. The second, to a great extent, is digital media is broader than advertising. It can be used for selling, it can be used for promotion, it can be used for customer service, CRM. 
Advertising in the digital media means more than Facebook ads. Rishad picks out Nike Plus as one advertiser which has successfully built up a small social community to its own benefit. Obviously, the new media can be a useful cost-saving tool for companies. Businesses using new media can cut costs in terms of distribution, direct mail, and at the same time create new revenue streams. But new media also brings something intangible, like brand recognition, which can't be measured in terms of dollars and cents. An example I give is if you go to the British Penguin book site, they are six of their short story writers, right, to write stories utilizing new media. And you can write amazing stories because it's like, you know, saying, you can write stories with a pencil and paper, or you can write stories today with a pencil and paper and Flickr and Wikipedia and everything else. And some people can write better stories because they have better tools. So you can build brands in a better way. No wonder Rishan Tabakawala has been hailed as new media marketing guru. He's the head of The New, a future think do company that specializes in new media marketing strategies. And he happens to be this week's headliner on That's IT's CEO's Pick. The Jet Setter CEO this week is a gadget geek. He spends most of his time on planes where he listens to his extensive music collection on his gadget pick. The one gadget that I cannot live without is the Apple iPhone. Rishad is an early adopter to new technology. He bought the first generation iPhone. And now that he has his iPhone, he no longer needs to carry around an MP3 player or a laptop. Because to him, it's an all-in-one. The reason is because it's many, many gadgets in one. In addition to the applications that come with the iPhone, which is the ability to listen to music or watch videos or obviously talk on the phone or text or use the web, it also has the application store, which allows me to download all kinds of different programs. And therefore, in effect, it to a great extent is a world in my hand. I use it for a variety of reasons. I use it to text people. I use it to talk to people. But I also use it in planes to listen to music. I use it sometimes, believe it or not, to find out what music is actually playing. So I've got a piece of software called Shazam, which I got for free from the application store, which allows me to put my phone up to a loudspeaker and it will tell me what the song is. And if I want to, I can go buy it from the iTunes store. varies according to the mood, but there are two types of music that I use a lot. I, when I'm in various places, I tend to use the health club and I run. So I have a lot of lists of running music. On the other hand, when I come out of meetings, right, and I want to relax, I have a lot of classical music. So I've got two sets of music, which is music to relax with and music to run to. I would say my favorite feature today of the iPhone, believe it or not, is the alarm, okay, it's a great alarm and I travel all around the world and the fact that I can get up at the right time because of this and it's got a great snooze button and I can have multiple alarms is what I like a lot. It basically snoozes for about 10 minutes but you can play around with it, but what you can also do is you can set three different alarms, so each of them ringing about 30 minutes apart if you want. This is Channel News Asia. Being sexy and sustainable go hand in hand, since there's nothing sexier than someone who cares for the environment. So when it comes to choosing fashion items, it wouldn't be a surprise that an eco-chic person would want items with materials that are organic and sustainably sourced. On this week's episode of The Green List, we'll show you how you can green your wardrobe in style with our eco-friendly designers. On The Green List, Thursday, 9.30 p.m. on Channel News Asia. Channel News Asia is well positioned as a global news provider with Asian perspective and that's very important for us in our business. Congratulations Channel News Asia on your 10th anniversary. Channel News Asia, celebrating 10 years of Asian perspectives. Saturday on Japan Hour. Some of the world's most beautiful things are free. 
like the exquisite view from this 90 metre high suspension bridge. magnificent shoreline scenery of a beach that stretches on and on. And the lush scenery from atop a historical temple supported by pillars. Check out these lovely places to visit on Japan Hour, Saturday at 7.30pm. Japan Hour is brought to you by Sumitomo Corporation, ANA, All Nippon Airways, Kalbi, Daikin, Funko, NEC, Pilot Pin, UOBTravel.com and Yakult. Welcome back to That's IT. Now, don't you worry, I'm not here to perform a song and dance number for you. But for someone who appreciates music, I'm really glad that new media is around that allows me to download music, whatever music I want, whenever I want it, online. Legally, of course. It's even easier now that I can get music through my phone. So who needs CDs when you've got one of these? Forget CDs or old-fashioned record stores. All you need now is your trusty phone and a 3G connection to access the world of music. One such mobile music store is Moto Music, which also owns online music store SoundBuzz. You pay a monthly subscription fee of around $2 and you can download full audio tracks from Moto Music at two US dollars. And with a trusty 3G connection, you can download on the go. Convenience isn't the only advantage. I think the, the biggest advantage of mobile music stores or online music stores, you know, whichever digital format of music you choose to buy compared to a CD, is that you get to pick and choose the track that you wish to buy, and I think that call it unbundling, call it the availability of the single format, is really what makes it interesting for you know, individuals to be able to buy what they want. It's just the explosion of choice. If Moto Music is the a la carte option, then Nokia comes with music must be the buffet spread. Singapore is the first country in the world where Nokia comes with music has been launched. You pay a fixed price for the new comes with music phone, and you can get to download all the music you want for one whole year, all for free. Consider that a Nokia comes with music phone costs about $100 to $300 more than a non-comes-with-music counterpart. It would take only 150 song downloads to get your money's worth. And with more than 4 million songs available, you could download 10,000 songs a day and still not have explored the entire database in a year. So a year seems too short, especially when most mobile line contracts are two years long. I don't see the one year as a service limitation. Uh, on the contrary, I think the simple fact that uh, customers can download uh, all the music they want and keep it if they want to buy new music, they can go to the Nokia music store, is simply incredible value. Further to that, we are working with the industry players as well as with our partners on evolving and building up on the existing already a revolutionary service. As an industry player, Ray is both a musician and a music lover. Mobile downloads may offer convenience and choice, but Ray is one of the rare few who isn't dancing to the tune of new media just yet. His biggest gripe with both Moto Music and Comes With Music is that they are incompatible with his Mac. To him, music is all about the experience, and it doesn't matter that it makes more economic sense to buy MP3s. The traditional option still wins, hands down. Definitely, I would choose physical CDs. Um, I guess not, not so much because of the, the economic factor. I mean, I'm not really much of a spendthrift either. Um, I don't blow my money without thinking. So if I do buy a CD, I like to think that I buy the CD because I think it's of good value. And at the same time, the CD kind of gives you an experience. I like to pop a CD into a player and I like to sit back and listen to it. Or I like to put it in my car. I mean, I, yes, people tell me, yes, you can plug an iPod in, but it just doesn't feel the same. Love them for their convenience or loathe them for their voyeurism. 
camera-equipped phones are here to stay. And well, in today's downturn, all-in-one gadgets are probably the best buys in this economic downturn. Today, they are growing both in size and megapixel count. But not all camera-equipped phones are created equal. Well, your phone these days are used not just for calling or sending messages anymore, not just for downloading music as well, because these days we take a lot of pictures with our phones. So this week on Gadget Wars, we're taking a look at three phones with high megapixels and see which one is the best. And sitting beside me to help me out is Leisha. She is uh, an artist manager for independent bands. And how important are camera phones for, for your line of work? Well, a mobile phone camera in in my work is really rather important because they serve as an emergency backup phone. They're really important in that sense because sometimes you run out of batteries on your other cameras or there are places which don't exactly we, allow we professional cameras. know a lot cameras. of those places, of course. Yes. And right in front of me are three of the latest mobile phone cameras uh, from some of the big manufacturers of mobile phones. First up is uh, Motorola's ZN5. It is a 5 megapixel uh, phone camera collaboration with Kodak. And then Sony Ericsson's uh, Cybershot C905. This one is a uh, 8 megapixel camera. We'll put that to the test uh, later. And of course, we have the Samsung Pixon. This one is an 8 megapixel camera with full touchscreen function. We'll put all three of these camera phones to the test with Leisha's help, of course. So let the battle begin. The challenge begins with the weight and bulk test. The ZN5 is a featherweight and also wins the battle of the bulge. But we're not here to compare phones, but cameras. Okay, Alicia, we're gonna put you on the spot now. Which one do you think is the best camera phone? I think the best among these three has to be the Pixon, the Samsung Pixon. Okay. Earlier on, we took some pictures of the same scenery, in that right. sense. And if you look at them, the Sony, the two of them took brilliant pictures, of course, but the Sony one sort of lose some of the colours. I mean, the these were different... On this one is a lot it's, sharper. It's a lot actually. sharper. Um, the one that's on the Motorola is not really that bad, but it kind of lose a little bit of details mm -hmm. after after looking at it really. But one would think that because of the brand name, Cybershot or the Motorola uh, Kodak, uh, you would think that these two were, will actually take better images. Yes, precisely. But then again, a phone is a phone is a phone, you know? It's like you build something to serve its purpose, even though it comes with another function usually. You will always have to choose for something else that it's built for. Okay, well, the Samsung Pixon wins this round of uh, the battle, but uh, the war is not over. A lot of camera uh, phone makers are even packing in more stuff uh, into their camera phones, uh, stabilizers and uh, better uh, autofocus uh, systems. And even uh, I heard 12.1 megapixel uh, phone cameras in the works. So. Uh, hey, if uh, you want to save money, you might go for one of those. But if you compare uh, images taken from a mobile phone camera to something perhaps like this uh, Sony Cybershot T90. Uh, it's 12.1 megapixel, by the way. Which one do you think will win? The Sony Cybershot T90 camera is a 12.1 megapixel powerhouse that won't break the bank. Sony is mum on the pricing, but a similar model, the Sony T77, costs around 300 US dollars. In times like this, it's a bargain. Here are the pictures we took. Have a look. Okay, Lisha, final, final, final verdict this time. Okay. A camera phone with a good camera function or a standalone uh, point and shoot camera? It will have to be the digital camera. A lot of the uh, phone cameras are packing in a lot more camera functions into the phone. I wonder when cameras will start packing in phone functions into a camera. Wouldn't it be nice to just make a simple phone call on that uh, purposely built camera? 
And that brings us to the end of this week's Gadget Wars. Also, the end to this week's edition of That's IT. Don't forget, next week will be That's IT's season finale. I'm Timothy Go. That's it. Talk to me. Talk to me. If you feel the need or when you need the feeling, talk to me. If you feel the need or when you need the feeling, talk to me. It's the season finale of That's IT, and this time around, we're bringing you tech toys of a different kind. Ow! <laughs> now, who said gadgets are only for adults? Find out how technology has shaped a new era in learning and play. On That's IT for kids! Hey, that's my line. <laughs> Tuesday at 8.30. Providing Asian perspectives in an ever-changing landscape. Channel News Asia. Through technology, innovation, and plain determination, Asia's growth and emergence on the world has shifted to high gear. That's why, more than ever, you need to understand Asia from the inside. Stay tuned to Channel News Asia, the only news channel providing Asian perspectives. Malaysia's top politicians and opposition leader is charged with sedition, while a top member of the ruling party is implicated for alleged money politics. The North Korean Premier arrived. final leg of That's IT this season, and we're going to make it a little bit different today. You ready, kids? Because yeah, yeah. today it's all about... IT for Kids! 